Hello and welcome to this presentation on Tableau and Salesforce. Uh, my name is Rob Levine. I'm a lead solution engineer at Tableau. Uh, and we also have a couple of other presenters for our session today. Uh, we have John Denby, one of, our ta one of Tableau's lead cr uh, creative strategists. And we're also fortunate to be um, joined by one of our partners, Atrium AI. We have Colin Gelfer, who's the uh, Senior VP of Solutions, Dave Dixon, the Director of Analytics, uh, and Andrew Carroll, who's a Machine Learning Lead, and they'll all be presenting throughout our session today. So here's our agenda of what we're gonna cover. We'll start out by demonstrating the current technique for embedding Tableau into Salesforce, uh, along with a more simplified approach that we're uh, very close to releasing. Um, and then John will cover our roadmap around the, integra the integration, spanning all aspects, uh, not just the embedding piece, but connectivity, security as well. Uh, then we'll turn it over to Atrium to talk about some common use cases and uh, some real world examples that leverage data science and predictions, followed by a look at how Einstein Analytics and Tableau work together. And so together, Tableau and Einstein Analytics provide trusted AI-driven enterprise-wide intelligence for the entire organization. The integrated platform, and we'll see today how we're starting to bring these solutions together, but it offers the flexibility to connect to all kinds of data across the enterprise, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, uh, with a strong uh, security and governance model. It's built for everyone from analysts who need to explore the data deeply to executives who just want a 360-degree view of their business and everyone in between. We find that most organizations will leverage both Tableau and Einstein Analytics, combining all that you know and love about Tableau with the purpose-built, native, intelligent, and actionable workflow from Einstein. And while Einstein is the preferred solution for Salesforce users, there are certainly situations where you want to embed Tableau in, into Salesforce, and that's the scope of this session today. You should definitely consult with your account team to discuss the best solution for your particular needs. Now, before we get going, I want to take a minute to mention a few things to keep in mind with regard to what you'll see today. Because there are some technical items that are necessary to have in place for a seamless integration between Tableau and Salesforce. Namely, things like single sign-on, secure communication through encryption, uh, any firewall considerations if you're using Tableau Server, and proper strategy around row-level security, data freshness, and other typical Tableau best practices. Again, we're not going to have, have the time to address these one by one, but know that other content is available around these topics. Plus, we'll also be providing helpful resources at the end uh, to these to uh, some additional information. So let's examine the current process for embedding. It's commonly referred to as a low-code approach. It's utilizing a simple parameterized URL from uh, your Tableau server or Tableau online inside of a three-line Visual Force page. And I'd say it covers the needs for most embedded scenarios. Uh, and it certainly sounds more complex than it actually is. So let's take a look at an example. Bring this over here. So here's a dashboard that's been published up to, um, in this case, Tableau Online, but the process, process would still be the same, even if it were Tableau Server. And we want to embed or access this particular dashboard from the Salesforce UI. So the first thing that we're going to need is a Visual Force page. So let's go ahead and create that. Within my setup, I'm just going to navigate to uh, my custom code tab, Visual Force pages, and create a new one. And I'll give this a quick name. Oop. Wrong area. And I'll make this available for Lightning. And you'll see that uh, Salesforce is actually actually going to generate some uh, starter Apex code. I'm going to remove this information in here, and we'll start from scratch. And the first thing we're going to need is the actual URL from the LinkedIn, uh, or from the, the dashboard that we're going to be embedding. And we'll put it inside the Apex code. And we're going to reference that as part of an iframe with the source equal to that URL. Equal sign, not a plus. So I'm gonna grab the, uh, the URL 
and you can get this with any dashboard that's, or, or, or a report that's been published up to Tableau Server or Tableau Online just by going to your Share button and copying the direct link. So now that I've got that copied, I'm going to put it down here just so I can see the full URL. I see that it's uh, got quite a lot out there. In fact, even more than we really need. So I'm going to trim that up here. Got, let me uh, grab it real quick. This is the um, the direct link, so let's put that in here. And that's really all I'm going to need from the uh, from the copy paste from the Tableau server or Tableau online. But I'd also need to append a specific parameter, and that is to embed it. So we will add that in and just say embed equals yes. So I'll save that and preview it just to see how it looks and make sure that it loads properly. And so it does look like it's loading. It looks like it's still interactive. Uh, obviously we have a bit of a sizing issue, so I'll fix that. And I also wanna strip out this toolbar at the bottom. So let's go back into our Visual Force page and I'm gonna go in and edit. I'll say toolbar equals no. And then I'll just give that a height just to give it a little bit more space. And we'll just say a thousand. And we'll see how it looks. So save and then preview one more time. And that looks a lot better. So now we actually have this dashboard. It's, uh, it's interactive, uh, it's not static. What I'd also like to do is take it one step further by having the data filtered out based off of a parameter. What I mean by that is, based off of the user ID that I'm logging into to Salesforce, I wanna use that to drive the filtering of, of all the different uh, visualizations on the dashboard. So again, that's just another parameter that we will uh, we'll invoke. So I'll do my edit one more time. And I'm going to put in this parameter here, the copy and paste. And that's basically saying that the seat ID uh, matches the user uh, department. This could match on any criteria or any field within your data. This just happens to be the, the, the match that we're going to leverage. And I'll say save. Preview one more time just to make sure that it's taking effect. And it looks like it has. So now that we have the embedded piece working, or at least the, uh, the, the reference to the, to the dashboard, what we now need to do is invoke this Visual Force page anywhere within the, the, the Salesforce UI. So in this case, what I'd like to do is have it set up as its own app, like this own, its own Lightning app. So it'll just be another menu option within this view here. So I'm gonna go through the uh, app, app Builder process. say Lightning App Builder. And we will create a new instance of that. And we'll just say it's going to be an app page. We'll call this the in embed. I'll choose my, my layout. In this case, we'll just go with a one region and then say finish, and now we just need to refer back to the uh, the Visual Force page, or essentially pull that in. So I'll pull in a uh, Visual Force page into the layout, and specifically mention or uh, choose the Visual Force page that I'm, that I'm gonna be pulling in here. And it looks like the, uh, the embedding is working. I'll just resize that here so that it's not scrunched up here. Give it a little extra room and we're good to go. So that's it. That's the simple Visual Force page reference. Um, 
Again, it's just driven by the parameter within the URL. And we'll say save. Activate it for our users. And then we'll actually take a look at this from the menu. One more time. So now if I go back, we go to the home page, I should be able to see that as a, a specific app, which will then load the embedded visualization. Go into my setup, or excuse me, go into my app selection. Let's see LinkedIn embed. Once this renders, we should have uh, successfully embedded a Salesforce, excuse me, a Tableau dashboard uh, dynamically inside of Salesforce. And that's really, they're all, uh, that's really all there is to it. So let me go back into the presentation here. And um, what I'd like to do at this point is pass it over to John, who's going to cover the uh, integration roadmap. Yeah, thanks, Rob. And that was really cool. In fact, I'll make a little extra note to the people out there. Uh, one of the cool things about Tableau is, uh, especially when you're creating these lightning apps, um, you may actually want to create a um, create something also for mobile. And as you are aware, Tableau serves up mobile views. And so had uh, Rob gone an extra level and said he wanted to make that lightning app available on mobile. Um, it would have showed up in Salesforce mobile and it would have also picked up the mobile view from uh, that particular dashboard. So it's uh, kind of a one, two, you get, get two for the price of one from that perspective. So uh, with that, uh, Rob, you want to flip to the, the next slide for me? I think I've got a slide. Yeah. So, um, so I get the honor to tell you a little bit about some of the things that we're working on here at Tableau and Salesforce uh, in particular. And so some of this stuff has been released. In fact, uh, now that Prep 2020 is out of the door, uh, most of the stuff I'm gonna be talking to you is actually in your hands today. Uh, the first one was in 2020.1, we did some improvements on our desktop and server connector. We brought it up to the latest API release for Salesforce. Uh, with a commitment that we'll continue to do that going forward. Uh, we also added um, some dynamic approaches to the way we use APIs. Um, as you may or may not be aware in the Salesforce world, one of the great things of the Salesforce platform is all the different APIs and metadata that it actually conjures up when you first create something in Salesforce. And so uh, we want to be able to take advantage of that. And so we're doing kind of a smart API approach uh, when you connect with desktop or server, uh, we look at what we're trying to get, what the best format is to get it, and we use the right API to go get it. And what that's meant is with this kind of smart API approach, we've actually been able to increase extract times by, you know, be able to come down by 5x uh, so that you can refresh those extracts really quickly from uh, Salesforce. Um, the other thing that we introduced is our first direction of this. Now, in the documentation, uh, when you look on Tableau help and stuff like this, and even in the tool, it'll actually say custom SQL or SQL on the, um, on the interface. But what that really is, is custom SOQL, Salesforce Object Question Language, also known as SOQL, uh, depending on, uh, so just like SQL is known as SQL, SOQL is also known as SOQL. So um, what we did with that is we made it available in a single object format. So if you know anything about SOQL or if you go research it, you'll find that one of the great things is you can create multi-level um, queries and questions and it works and it looks a lot like SQL or SQL. Uh, but it's geared for the Salesforce API. And so for the first release, we have it connecting to a single object. Our goal is later this year at some point in one of the few releases left is that we will support multi-object SQL. And at that point, uh, really the sky's the limit. You can write 
a so-called statement to get just the fields and just the objects you want and be able to do things like date filtering and stuff like that. So that's coming soon. We also added in 2020.2 our release of a connector for um, uh, prep in Salesforce. Uh, much like our journey right now, it's a uh, what I would call a V1 release. Uh, it allows you to quickly um, attach to different objects. You can even log into different orgs. Uh, it's a way you can blend objects together from different orgs. You can create a relationship with the different objects, just like you would in our desktop connector. And then now you have all the power of prep. So you can do the transformations, you can uh, enrich that data with other data sources. You can do things like filtering and stuff like that. So um, it really brings the power of prep um, front and center into uh, what we're doing now with our connectors. And as we grow this year, we'll also be doing some things like that. Um, there's a few other things that we have coming. I'm going to hop down to the customer 360 uh, here for a second just to um, hit that. But uh, we are working on a few other approaches to unlocking data in Salesforce. Uh, one is um, this month, uh, we were in the, I should say which month it is since we're recording this. Uh, it is in the May month, uh, so late May, early June, we'll be releasing a Datarama uh, a connector, and we'll actually be doing that a little bit different. Datarama itself will generate the files and put it on the Tableau server, but that'll unlock another source of Salesforce data in the marketing cloud from Datarama. We're also looking at being able to connect live uh, to Einstein uh, data, and you'll see a little bit of that in the demo later with Atrium because they'll actually show you some things they're doing to get data out of Einstein. Um, going back to the security piece, we are focusing more on a SAML first approach. Uh, we're, you know, giving guidance and information. Uh, it is really the quickest way to get into and do stuff with Salesforce and Tableau together as if they're both on the same SAML. Uh, so you'll continue to see documentation and information we provide around that. Um, in just a second, I'm going to show you the one toy I have to show you that will actually make what Rob did even easier uh, with what we call a lightning web connector uh, or web component. Uh, I keep getting that component connector uh, tied together. I'm thinking about data connectors, but it's lightning web component. That is a Salesforce term, also known as an LWC. Uh, we are currently, it's uh, the 18th of May when we're recording this. Uh, we are currently in an alpha state with that solution. And uh, if you're watching this and we haven't moved to beta yet, we would love to be able to include you in a closed alpha. You just need to reach out to your account team and we'll get you in touch with the right people in dev. Our goals are to run this alpha for a few more weeks and then at some point it will become an open beta uh, sourced on GitHub. It will be open sourced and you'll be able to start using it uh, going forward from that perspective. And then the last things are the things you're gonna see right after me. So the ideas of getting um, Einstein into Tableau, which will be our kind of main course here in just a second, but also, like I said, finding ways to connect to Salesforce data, either through Einstein, through Datarama, through enhanced connectors, through different things like that. So with that, um, I am gonna share my screen if this works and I am going to um, show you a lightning web component. Um, so um, what you saw earlier was something that Rob did that was really easy. It looks like uh, I've got my LinkedIn app here. Uh, so I can actually see kind of just what he did in addition with some other LinkedIn dashboards and things like that. But wouldn't it be easier if, like you saw, he went and got the share URL. Wouldn't it be easier if I could just do that without a Visual Force page and then maybe be able to do some light filtering or uh, things like that? So the answer is yes. Very soon with our LWC, you'll be able to do that. So let me show you how that works. To start, I need to figure out what I'm actually going to put in this particular demo. So I'm gonna cross launch. This uh, demo environment I'm in is actually connected through Salesforce Identity. So I am using same SAML. I am authenticated as a SAML user. 
And I kind of scroll down here and I look at stuff that's in here and I see some of the stuff that uh, Rob used and stuff like that. Uh, but I've got this just really basic activity tracker that's looking at data out of LinkedIn. So I'm looking at messages, meetings, calls, and emails. And I think this would be a great insight to be able to marry with some other data that's in my Salesforce app. Um, app. So the first thing I'm going to do is just like Rob did. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to copy my share link. I'm going to grab that. Um, then I'm going to come back over here to Salesforce and go expand this out. And I've pre-staged my application, which I'm calling Better Together. Uh, Better Together is my way of being able to take insights from both Salesforce and Einstein discovery and analytics and marry it with data that would complete that message uh, with Tableau. And so I've got some Einstein insights right here. I've got a really cool visual that's telling me what my gap is to quota, and it's giving me an idea of how Einstein thinks I'm going to finish up uh, getting to my quota. So great performance insight. But I really want to marry that with those, uh, those uh, call stats and things in LinkedIn. So I go over here to Enterprise Wide Access uh, Insights, and you'll see I've got a blank page, very similar to what Rob showed you. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to Edit. Uh, an edit page. This interface will look um, pretty much the same as what uh, Rob just showed you. Uh, and I go down here and there's all sorts of different Lightning Web components. Rob used one when he picked up the Visual Force page, which is basically encapsulating that into that. I can come down here and as I scroll down, I see our little Tableau visual. And if I zoom, uh, I think I can zoom on here. Uh, well, I, I I actually don't have my mouse that zooms. So anyway, but hopefully you see that where it says Tableau visualization. I'm going to actually drag that sucker over. I'm going to drop it very similar to the way Rob did. And it's actually going to show me a public viz to start with. So that just tells me, hey, it's working. Um, I'm linking out to something. But I want to actually replace that with uh, what I had in the... Uh, other situations. So if I just uh, delete this all out, and you'll see that it has a URL very similar. And now I go in here and I do a control V to paste. Now you see my link that I just got from the other side. I hit enter. Now you'll see that visual show up. And much like what Rob did, I can do a few things. I can say, hey, I want to get rid of the toolbar. And I want to just be able to size this down. So I'll do maybe that as well. And it looks like it's sizing the way I want. And then I'm able to go ahead and save this. And then when I save it and activate it and tell it to go ahead and save that and hit the back. Now you see my app, I've got my enterprise uh, wide insights, and then I've also got my better together from an Einstein perspective, and this is fully interactive in, in the way I would expect it. If I had decided to go ahead and embed this on a um, object in Salesforce, my lightning web component would have popped up with a simplistic, do you wanna edit to this uh, record ID? Uh, and I wouldn't even need to write a filter statement like what Rob did. Uh, future versions, we think fairly closely, will give you a little bit more control over the editing in the Lightning Web Component interface. But it really is the future of where we're going. We think that that's going to allow us to plug in and do a lot of things in the Lightning uh, interface. So that's what I have to show you today. I guess, Rob, I'm going to pass it back to you, and then we'll move on with the, uh, the call at this point. That's perfect. Thanks, John. Let me go ahead and share my screen again just to get the agenda back up. Okay, so at this point, we'll turn it over to uh, Colin and the Atrium team, um, and then uh, we'll finish up afterwards with a couple of uh, resources. So, Colin, uh, over to you. All right, so let me get queued up here. And I think we're ready to go. I think Colin's going to kick us off. Yeah. All right, so... Thanks, John and, and Rob. Um, it's great to see 
the experience of embedding Tableau into, into Salesforce. Uh, so hello, everybody. This is Colin Gelfer with Atrium. Uh, I lead our solutions team at Atrium. We're a consulting partner that's focused on uh, systems of intelligence. And today, we're really going to show you three things. Um, first, we're going to talk about just kind of the, the broader uh, market, where things are heading from a machine learning perspective. And then second, we're going to give you a quick overview on how you can uh, really take advantage of some of the capabilities that Einstein has um, from a prediction standpoint, give you a, a little bit of an overview of the architecture, what's actually possible. And then third, and really most importantly, uh, show you how you can take advantage of the Einstein predictions uh, within the world of Tableau. So really bringing those two solutions together. Uh, but first, just wanted to kind of start with our mindset and just do a little bit of an intro on Atrium. Um, so we're big believers in this whole notion of systems of intelligence and that there's this big shift occurring um, within uh, enterprise systems. So obviously, we've been implementing systems of record, um, frankly, for the past 20 or 30 years, um, really asking folks to capture a bunch of data around different functional or process areas, uh, ERP, um, HCM systems, um, certainly CRM. Um, there's been a big movement as we've transitioned to cloud um, and the ability to access that data anywhere, collaborate around it more effectively, um, and take advantage of capabilities like social and mobile. And now we're seeing a huge shift into this notion of systems of intelligence. And really what that means is not only being able to surface insights and visualizations, but to take that information and push it into the workflow of an end user so that they can take action. Um, so providing things like recommendations, notification, uh, inline analytics, similar to some of the capabilities that you saw today, uh, really having these insights meet the user where they do their work. And so Dave, maybe if we can transition to the next slide. And just to put a finer point on it and a little bit more context around our organization. So I mentioned we're a consulting partner. Um, we're really focused, uh, as I said, around systems of intelligence and specifically um, supporting both the, the Salesforce uh, uh, application stack, uh, things like Einstein, but also Tableau. So we're also a Tableau partner. And really the role that our team is trying to play is this intersection between business strategy, um, identifying what are the best outcomes to tackle to drive business value, pairing that up with data science and math skills, and then being able to take these insights and push them into cloud platforms like Salesforce. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on us before I transition to my colleague. Um, Andrew, I'll, I'll pass it over to you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to chat with you today. Hopefully I'm coming through loud and clear. Um, today I just wanted to take you through a little bit of our mindset when it comes to predictions, um, specifically with the goal in mind of, of getting to visibility. That's what the, that's what the, the Tableau universe is all about, that, that, we can, that we can not just have access to the data, but we can see in, in a just-in-time fashion the data that we need at the time that we need it. Um, so if you can go ahead and scroll through, Dave. Just to give you a, a notion of the broader context, I'm sure most of the people on the line right now are familiar with, uh, with some of these numbers. Um, data volumes are growing at obviously an exponential rate as is, you know, as is the law. Um, but, uh, but you see this just massive explosion of data um, being, being held and warehoused over time. Um, to the point that, you know, it'll approximately six tuple from, uh, from now until 2025, which is, you know, a really short time horizon. 50% um, uh, of that data approximately will be stored uh, in cloud environments where cloud analytic solutions are readily available to be applied. And, um, you know, an another big number here, tr $3 trillion in AI value. Um, so the Economist had an article that, that estimated 2021, we'd have AI augmentation creating about $3 trillion in value, um, saving man hours. And that's not just in the industrial space with, uh, you know, uh, automation and manufacturing. Um, so I'm going to take you through today some of the, some of the potential use cases uh, for prediction and kind of help you situate where Einstein discovery would fit there. All right. 
Next slide, please. When we're thinking through all of this, I, I want to contextualize where, where predictions live. We think of uh, we think of a system of intelligence as more than just uh, it's much more than just AI. It's as I mentioned earlier, it's visibility into the data that you have. So how could that maturity grow over time? You know, level one we kind of view as reporting. Can you see what happened in some prior time frame? So that's like static reports that you might see in Salesforce, as an example. Um, a next level up is uh, dynamic and embedded analytics. Can you do that? Same question, can you answer those same questions? What happened dynamically, visually, and live? So what's happening at a glance? Next, as you, as you head up this curve, your first predictive model. So is it possible that your data actually supports making predictions about the future? Um, so it's a, a what may happen type of question, but oftentimes the first phase of this is sort of siloed in maybe a data science uh, team, for example, which means that the next level up is that you expose this data, you expose these insights or these predictions uh, to end users, or to users who need to see them. So maybe you know someone in sales would wanna know not only where I am, where I might be, and they wanna see that right in front of them. Um, still the next level up, insight-driven recommendations. So not just predictions about the future, but how could you act to change the future? Where could I be in six months from now? And the, the, the highest level up um, that, that we have for maybe individual use cases is, can you automate the mundane so that the individualized experience comes out? So can you automate things that uh, are perfunctory steps in a sales process, for example, and focus on the human interactions that are gonna make a difference? And so we see each of these as, uh, as a component to the, the whole system of intelligence. Now, obviously, uh, the, the higher you get, the more it's based on having some visibility into predictions. So the visibility doesn't leave. You still have that core component of being able to see the results of your data. So keeping that intelligence maturity curve in mind, we can hop over to some common use cases. And then after common use cases, I'll talk about uh, where Einstein discovery can fit. So there's a whole world of, of predictions that are available, right? Um, from you know, what we focus on oftentimes in, uh, in sales organizations with CRM based use cases, sales optimization, so things like lead conversion propensity, marketing, um, touch point predictions, you know, what's gonna make the most difference in this, in this sales track. Um, similarly, relationship valuation, you know, how's, if you have a current customer, how's your relationship going? Can you use, for example, natural language processing to, to look at the reviews? Can you check out your support cases and understand uh, how you're tracking with that engagement. In particular, can you predict things like potential to transact, which relates to what Rob was showing us earlier in his dashboards. You know, there was a, there were opportunity propensities, for example, um, there were hot accounts. Hot accounts could be things that are predicted to be, you know, likely to transact with you at that moment if those are certain customers. We see use cases in higher education, tracking students' propensity to re-enroll, tracking uh, success over time. Um, product offerings are huge, right? So this is the second column here. Product offerings like the the Netflix, uh, the Amazon. Who are your uh, who are your similar users, and what can I offer to you that would kind of uh, bolster your likelihood to to purchase? Uh, important right now, healthcare management, right? So uh, predicting hospital readmissions, um, disease tracking, hotspot predictions, identification of at risk at risk populations. These are all crucial uh, healthcare management um, stages and they can be imbued with, uh, with prediction, as you can tell. Anomaly detection is another huge one, fraud detection, web traffic uh, and financial transactions, um, huge for, uh, for the, the predictive space. Um, just a few more here, predictive forecasting. So uh, we talked about sales organizations already. Rob was showing us some opportunities um, you know, given their propensities or given these opportunities that we have, how many of them are going to close? How many of them are going to actually end up paying out? Um, what's our sales going to look like at the end of a quarter? Um, user segmentation, I already a little bit alluded to in product uh, recommendations, but the last one I wanna to touch on because it uh, relates to what Dave is gonna show you in a minute with his uh, Tableau uh, interaction is early warning systems. So can you predict when potential problems are going to arise? Early identification of 
client missed dissatisfaction or order delays, uh, which will come up, um, or other negative events. So you can see that there's a whole world of predictive use cases out there. And where does Einstein discovery situate itself? Next slide, please. So Einstein discovery fits any time you can take the question that you're trying to ask and break it into a collection of subproblems, each one which can be answered either through a linear regression, predicting a value, predicting a number, uh, or classification. So predicting a probability to be in class A or class B. So to give you a, a concrete example of this, again, Rob showed us some opportunities uh, previously. So, you know, in a sales process. So with the classification, we could be making a prediction about the propensity for an opportunity to close. You've probably often seen, you know, opportunity score is 80% is propensity, but, you know, oftentimes that's just based on the stage. But what if we can imbue that with a little bit more information about the opportunity? Linear regression, things like how long will it take this opportunity to close? How much uh, is this opportunity actually worth relative to what it was actually what it was benchmarked against? So that's uh, you know the life of a data scientist is taking these use cases and breaking and breaking them down into these elementary questions that we can answer over time. So I want you to keep that in mind as we transition to Dave, who's going to show you one of these particular use cases. All right, thank you, Andrew. I'm going to talk a little bit about Einstein and Tableau and, and how they can kind of work together in terms of surfacing predictions um, inside of Tableau. Um, but I thought it would be helpful to start with really a conversation around Einstein and what Einstein is sort of from an architectural standpoint. So um, Salesforce has lots of different products. And um, within that sort of universe of products, they have a brand that is Einstein that encompasses a lot of products that tend to have uh, AI, machine learning, and sort of analytics uh, a focus on them. So I'm not going to be talking so much about Einstein uh, bots or Einstein vision or those aspects of Einstein today. I'm really going to be talking about uh, the predictive and analytics pieces um, that you find with the Einstein Analytics Plus offering or Einstein discovery are often referred to as, as Einstein predictions. So when we talk about the architecture of Einstein, um, I think this slide is really helpful. So uh, full disclosure, I stole this slide from Salesforce, so uh, I give credit where credit is due. But I call this, uh, this slide the, uh, the four layer cake slide with frosting. And if we look down here at this bottom layer, we see um, that um, Einstein is enterprise uh, ready cloud. What that means is that at its core, it's built on the same multi-tenant cloud infrastructure that Salesforce is. So you don't have a physical uh, installation uh, of the Einstein products, they live uh, within the cloud, and you kind of get the benefits uh, out of that as well, right? So uh, you get the you know dynamic scale, um, uh, you know, um, uh, sort of the security that they've got baked in, uh, the fact that you don't sort of have to man uh, manage the software upgrade uh, and or, or worry about really performance tuning um, sort of hardware because it's all living within the cloud, right? And this. Next piece up on uh, as we as we move up the stack uh, is talking about the fact that Einstein is also a platform, and that platform component is going to come into play in the demo that I'm going to show today, uh, because um, there's a full API uh, associated with the Einstein platform, so we're able to make basically programmatic calls to get data into and data out of Einstein and to get predictions out of Einstein as well. Um, as we move up the layer, we're talk or, or up the cake, we're talking about the layer that Andrew was just talking about, right? So where we're making those predictions around the probability of an outcome or what we think some uh, value is going to be. And so um, we have the ability to build models, to train models inside of Einstein. Um, and then we can take and basically uh, feed those models data or make reference to records that we've scored from those models to find out uh, what the likelihood is of some outcome or how long something may take, right? And that's really the predictive power of Einstein is really in this layer here, this third layer. And then finally, as we move up, we have an experience layer, which is really how users consume those predictions, consume the insights and the analytics within Einstein. Uh, so obviously, uh, Einstein Analytics has ability to build dashboards like you would see in Tableau. Um, but it extends beyond that in, in terms of um, 
how you can surface those insights within your CRM tool, within Salesforce, uh, and how you can make use of the action framework to have uh, the Einstein components interact with other Salesforce components within the lightning event framework, and the ability to do uh, notifications uh, as well, uh, and basically uh, make people aware of changes in their data that maybe signal some event has happened or a threshold has been crossed that they need to take action on. And then the final layer up here that, that I'm gonna speak to is what's called the Einstein Analytics apps. And so these apps are accelerators and they're, they're really functional based accelerators uh, for the most part. What I mean by that is they're focused on business functions more than they are industries. There are a few exceptions. They've started expanding and having uh, industry uh, app packs. Uh, but really the, the, the initial focus of these apps was on functions like sales. So you could, it'll, it allows you to go in and run a wizard and based on the Salesforce object model, uh, it would pull in the data that you needed to create the data sets that you needed to be able to um, do all the sort of common things that sales teams would need to do. So you would get a collection of dashboards that helped you manage your pipeline, help you understand uh, where you're having shift in your pipeline, help you understand your team and how you're performing against quota. All those sort of common use cases um, and the best practices that Salesforce has around those being sort of the, the world's leading CRM uh, are baked into those apps, right? And so um, you don't have to build a lot of stuff from scratch. You can literally run some wizards and then do some light customization if you want to. Uh, and so it's a really quick way to get value out of the platform. And then the last couple of things I'd focus on in the sliders, on both sides of this, you can see data coming into the platform and into the Einstein environment. And so um, uh, with all your sort of native Salesforce cloud, service cloud, marketing cloud, with all those sort of functions, obviously there's just baked in connectors. Additionally, there's a ton of baked in cloud uh, based connectors for things like uh, you know, AWS, uh, Azure, Google BigQuery. Uh, we do a lot of Amazon S3 integration. That seems to be very common as well. Um, and there's just native connectors there, so you don't need to stand up third-party tools. Uh, but if you do have data that is maybe behind the firewall or that Salesforce would not be able to easily access directly, uh, pretty much all your major ETL tools, uh, you know, MuleSoft, Informatica, Boomi, Talent, what have you, they all have connectors as well to allow you to bring data into Einstein to make those predictions and to surface those insights based on that data. So, how, um, uh, if we, we understand a little bit more about the architecture, sort of how it all fits together. Now I wanna talk a little bit about how we can take and take predictions that we've uh, created in Einstein, in Einstein Discovery, uh, and bring those into Tableau. So there's, uh, we've actually created a solution around this. We have an offering around that. I won't go uh, too much into that, but if you're interested, you can visit our website. Those links will be shared in the resources at the, the end of the deck here. But um, um, we have the ability to take Einstein predictions and basically create a data set, which is essentially a, a, a high speed data store within Einstein. And we can use Einstein data flows to basically score our data. So we have a set of data and we want prediction results around that. We can run those data floors and write that score into the data set. And using the Tableau web data connectors, we're actually able to make a query of that because as you saw on the previous slide, there's a, there's a REST API and we can make queries against those Einstein data sets and, and treat them just like any other data source in Tableau. We can uh, query that data and pull that data in to get those scores and to surface those scores within a Tableau dashboard. Now, one of the really cool features of uh, Einstein predictions and Einstein discovery is uh, in addition to the scores, you have the ability to get descriptive and prescriptive information related to that score. So why was the record scored this way? What are the sort of drivers um, uh, that are making that score be the value that it is, right? And um, in order to access those predictions, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So in order to access those predictions, we actually have a web service that we've created uh, that allows us to basically uh, make a call to the web service after we've authenticated. It will turn, uh, in turn, uh, make a call to the Einstein API, get back that JSON payload uh, for uh, the specific record we're looking at. In the case we're gonna be showing you here, that record would be in order. And 
uh, pull back basically the score as well as the descriptive information. So um, there's sort of the easy and fast way, but not complete, which is using the Tableau Web Data Connector. And then there's the, the more robust way, which pulls back all of the details, uh, and that's using the web service. And we sort of brought both of those together so that we're able to easily bring back information from Einstein into a Tableau uh, dashboard and then uh, surface those results. So I'll show you sort of what that looks like conceptually here. All right. So here we have a, a supply chain dashboard. Uh, this dashboard is just based on some data we created in Makaru, and we stood up a, a very simple model, basically just uh, put some data into Einstein uh, in order to sort of show the, the plumbing of how this would all work. When you look at these major components on the dashboard, all of the graphs and the charts, that's data we brought in through that uh, Tableau Web Data Connector that was making a query against an Einstein data set. It had all the dimensions and the measures, uh, as well as the model scores that we wanted to see. But when we look over here to the left and we have this card, this is, we're bringing this information in through the web service that we created. And what's happening with that web service is that as we click on a specific record, we're actually passing ID to that web service. Of course, it's not updating now. Oh, here it is now. A little bit of a lag there. Uh, as we click on the record, it's actually passing uh, a URL um, to our web service that includes that order ID. And uh, we take that order ID and we pass it along with the model identifiers into Einstein, and we pull back basically the score as well as the textual narrative as well. And so with that, basically just using a Tableau web component as well as the service, we're able to surface those results uh, uh, within Tableau, and you're able to consume those results uh, just like you would be able to inside of Salesforce. So the power here is that we have the ability to service users that our Tableau users maybe wouldn't typically get into the CRM system, right? So uh, maybe we're a supply chain user or a logistics manager, um, but we still want the value and the power of those predictions from Einstein, but we don't really normally get into Salesforce, so we wouldn't normally go there. We've got 20 reports maybe in Tableau. We don't want the 21st report in this instance to be uh, in Salesforce. So we're able to take those that predictive power uh, and expose it and bring it into Tableau that way. So that's sort of the, the, the power around this. So that being said, we have just a few minutes left, and now I'm going to turn it back over uh, to Colin and team to, to close us out. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. You can just pull up the last slide in the in the deck here. Um, yeah, let me get, get it here. Perfect. So just want to kind of wrap up, um, you know, in a lot of cases we get questions. All right, well, how do I get started with this? Um, you know, what's the kind of the, the typical path to getting started with bringing Einstein into the world of Tableau and just with machine learning in general? And so um, one of the techniques that we've had a lot of success with is um, doing an intelligent experience workshop. and. Um, really starting with understanding which questions you're trying to answer about your business, what outcomes you're trying to drive to, and then building consensus around that, and then, um, you know, evaluating the, the data that you have uh, available to drive these models. And so I just leave the team um, with kind of this last thought. This is a nice kind of entry point to have some of these discussions, and, um, you know, we're happy to field those um, from the team that's on the call today. Um, and with that, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to, to Rob to wrap us up with some, some Q&A. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, lastly, we just wanted to um, uh, make you aware of some resources that were available for you um, with regards to the, uh, the, the topics we've covered today. Uh, there are four of them. Let me actually pull them up here in the live view here. Uh, but the first one's going to be the uh, session that John and one of our other colleagues did around uh, embedding Tableau into Salesforce at uh, Tableau Conference uh, 2019. If you just go to the uh, TC19 website, you should be able to find that session. Uh, you can just do a simple search for CRM. 
Uh, a couple of other quick resources would be the Tableau Solutions page for Salesforce. Uh, and that is uh, directly on our website. And then uh, the other two are specifically to Atrium, the uh, Atrium homepage for uh, any questions around, uh, uh, around their information. So it's obviously just atrium.ai. And then finally is a, um, a blog post that uh, Dave Dixon, who obviously you heard on the call today, uh, has written around Tableau and Einstein together. Pull that over here. And so those are all certainly worth the worth your time and just to to listen or watch or read. Um, and with that, let me bring up the uh, the slide deck one more time. We just wanted to uh, say thank you for uh, for watching today.